Okay, so this is the main body of the Technics RS-M250. Basically the problem was um, this motor here drives the mechanism that actually lifts the, the tape unit. It also operates the uh, rewind uh, spool as well, and I think maybe the fast forward. So there's a belt in there that, you know, it looked okay, uh, but in fact it was gone quite hard and a little bit stretched, so it just really wasn't turning. Um, there was no velocity in, in the, the spin, so it was slipping quite considerably, so it just wasn't enough to activate anything. The main drive belt was okay, and there's another little belt there that was okay. Well, I mean, while I was there, obviously I've replaced all of those with new. Uh, this belt here, I actually couldn't get the right size. I think it's supposed to be like a 1.2 millimeter belt, but all I could get was, a, I think, a 1.6, and it's just ever so slightly too big, but it does clear what it needs to clear. I'm going to move the camera in a second, and we can have a bit more of a look at that. So aside from that, the only other problem was that this, uh, there's some panel lights here, or the lights doesn't work, and that's because the small little bulb, which is here, that's blown. And in fact, I mean, they go to these posts here, and one of those was basically off as well. So that just needs resoldering and replacing. But I'm in two minds about whether to try and, if I can't find the right bulb for this, I might have to just uh, do an LED, maybe add a resistor in there or something to sort of drop the voltage a bit or something like that. Uh, there are a few interesting things to talk about. So what I might do is we might position the camera over the top, so I'll just show you that mech a little bit better. And also I'll talk about the front panel. Okay, so this is the belt that I was talking about. This is the one that sort of stopped everything. Now it just ever so slightly, I think, misses this post here. That doesn't really seem to be a deal breaker because this is not actually running continuously. I mean, if that was rubbing on that and wearing all the time, it might cause us some, some major issues. It's really only used, I think, fast forward, re rewind, and when you actually... Uh, pressing stop and play, raising that mechanism, and then it just turns off. And I think this is the brake uh, solenoid, it's not quite a solenoid, it's an electromagnet. And it just, you know, clicks a, a, a lever, it actuates a lever, and that operates the braking function. And there's actually another one underneath. I might actually pull this out again. I mean, I've got to pull this out at some point, so maybe we can have a look at what's actually on the inside of there. But again, there's two motors. This is the main motor, and this is actually always on. Uh, this one only goes on when it's needed. So basically, you know, big, kind of a big mess of wires. Um, they've used these nice flat ca ribbon cables everywhere, except, you know, not everywhere. Um, but really not that much more interesting to say. There was uh, a few problems. Uh, on the other side of this there's actually like a small pendulum with a wheel. This actually has a geared tooth on it and it drives another wheel and when it moves I think that's actually what makes contact with like the rewind uh, like capstan thing. That was very very stiff so I had to disassemble that, re-lubricate it, put it back together and now the, the rewind is actually working because that was actually something after I put it all together the only thing that didn't work was rewind um, without the tape in there it would it would go but it just didn't have enough grunt when the tape was actually in there but that seems to be fixed now it seems to be working quite well so anyway um, as you know obviously I've pulled everything apart I've uh, lubricated everything as, as best I can Okay, moving on to the main PCB board, there's one, two, three large capacitors here. I do have replacements for those, I will put those in. Um, mostly because if these go or short out or something, you're going to have problems further down the line. That's, you know, can cause all kinds of issues. I'm in two minds about replacing all the others. I don't know whether it's necessary or maybe worth it, to be honest. Um, but I do have, you know, quite a few replacements for those as well. So we'll just see how I go. There are quite a lot, and whether it's, you know, ultimately worth worth the effort or not, I don't know. I think these 
lower voltage ones, they do tend to last quite a bit longer. And one thing I've noticed with tape decks is they do tend to have or tend to run at a slightly lower voltage than some other things, like an amp will typically run, you know, 35 plus or minus um, volts and, you know, maybe 50 volts plus or minus. So, you know, you've got, got a fair high range. And of course that generates more heat and other things. So, But one thing I will also point out is that this thing is, even for 1980 or 1981, this thing is really chock full of little microcontrollers and things like that. So it's actually quite impressive, also a bit daunting, because if anything goes wrong, well, you know, in 2020, trying to find a replacement is actually very difficult. Uh, even usual sort of places, like, you know, if you can't find it anywhere, you go to AliExpress, put in the chip number, and, you know, search away, but you get nothing on these. So uh, these were made by Mats Matsushita, uh, so basically they're Panasonic chips, because, you know, it's a Panasonic brand. So that's that. If they go, they, they're gone. Um, whether you could actually reverse engineer some other mechanism for it to work, I don't know. Okay, now we're looking at the front of this machine and, you know, here's the control panel. Nice big switches. I gave those a clean and in fact I was quite surprised to find that I could actually still buy these original switches. So I bought three just on the off chance that I needed them. Uh, they were like 30 in each or something like that. But I thought, you know, it cost me, you know, about five bucks to go down and back on the train. So I might as well just buy a couple just in the off chance that one of these uh, needs replacing. And of course the suspects would be, you know, stop, play, maybe fast forward, rewind. So I kind of figured that, you know, there might be three uh, good candidates for replacement. Um, and maybe, you know, once you can actually get them out off the board, it might be possible to clean them a little bit better. Given them all spray, it doesn't seem to be any issue. Everything uh, so far seems to work. Um, obviously, I haven't actually tested uh, the recording properly yet, but that, that's, you know, once it all gets put back together, that's something I will try. So anyway, I've removed the screws on this front faceplate here, and I'm just going to show that... Uh, mechanism so there's this little pendulum thing here and there's a, a geared wheel just behind there <clears throat> see if I can focus in on that a bit better you can kind of see it now so that's driven by that motor and there's a little tire that makes contact with this and that is your rewind basically so this whole Thing needed uh, pulling off there's a small little washer there and that's basically a friction fit it just sort of it's just plastic and it goes over the uh, the shaft and it's like a little notch where it just cl clicks in so you've got to be careful removing that one that you don't break it and don't damage it and two that doesn't fly off into nowhere because they're going to be you know a little bit hard to get a replacement uh, you obviously you can get replacements but it's better if you just take care and don't need to um, so yeah that's really all there is to it uh, you can kind of see the brake mechanism there one thing I found uh, that helped a little bit is I just used and I know it's not good to do this but I used a little bit of uh, cleaning alcohol just on the outside surface of that rubber just to clean all the gunk and caked on stuff off that and also on this wheel here now the reason I did that is because you don't want any slippage. If they actually make a, a reasonable contact, they will, uh, you know, they'll grip and they'll turn and they'll do the job that they're meant to do properly. And this one was, you know, it was actually brown. Look, so alcohol is not not the greatest thing for rubber, especially old rubber like that. Uh, it's already dried out, but you know what what's my option um, getting a replacement one of these is probably not super easy you know I know you can get them in Aliexpress I haven't found any here in Japan um, the problem with anything from Aliexpress right now is obviously logistics are basically backed up and I can't get anything I've ordered stuff that's you know taking months and months and months and uh, no hope of, of seeing it anytime soon 
Okay, this is a better look, and you can actually see that little black washer there. That's the thing that you need to pry off. Again, be very careful. You don't want to break it. You don't want to damage uh, any part of it. And oh, the other thing is, on the other side of this, that I mean, there's a shaft in here. Then there's like a, a geared wheel with the tire attached to it, and then there's a sort of a clutching mechanism. But on the very other end of that shaft is basically a press fit. Um, end and then there's a spring in there as well so that pressed end fit actually needs to be just by well I use a pair of pliers that actually have like a round section that I could just use to gently twist that off and you know could take it apart and then I could clean inside now there was some grease in there but obviously it's gone you know it's nearly 40 years isn't it so that's gone hard it's not good, so cleaned it out, replaced, um, put a new grease in there. And then everything seems to work. Now, here's the grease that I've been using. This is a tummy out, you know, they make remote controlled things, you know, cars and whatnot. So this is uh, found just in a hobby shop. It's actually, it is actually a some kind of gear grease it's supposed to be safe for plastics and all that sort of stuff so and just to show you this light bulb actually just sits in here just clips into there so obviously nothing very exciting about that it's not really a very easily serviceable part so I would imagine that this could have been blown for a very long time and because of the access because you would actually have to take that front panel off plus also you need to get into the back around the side there to um, solder that wire because the bulb doesn't seem to come out separately. I'll just show you here. There you go. That's, that's basically connected to the wire. There's no socket or anything like that. So that's kind of making me think that maybe a LED solution is probably a good one for that. We don't have to go in there and service it at another time or anything like that. We can just do it once and forget about it. Okay, we're just looking now at the rest of the controls. These have not been cleaned. Um, as you can see, they're quite dirty still, so they're going to get the same treatment as I showed you at the beginning. Uh, this panel seems the display seems to work very nicely. Um, when I play music back on it, you can see that you know the VU media is actually working properly. Uh, when I hit record with a blank tape in there, it was sort of showing nothing and that's because I've got no input um, but I'll sort that out later at the moment it was just really a matter of just checking whether all the controls were working um, and whether anything was actually happening and it, it does appear that it's working correctly so overall I'm you know quite pleased with this it was not an expensive item but all the functions and everything seems to be be there everything seems to be working so you know they did make these things quite differently you know this is not a one of those cheap Chinese like Tanishin units or whatever they are so this is uh, you know in a different different realm like I said I'm going to get into there get into the PCB do a bit of uh, desoldering and resoldering I'll have a look at some of these capacitors maybe pull them out and, and check some of the small ones I mean once I check it it's getting replaced anyway I'm not putting an old one back in not ever we'll just see I mean, if they test all right and they're still in spec, they're not creeping up, then maybe I won't just do the entire lot. I'll look at anything that looks maybe a little bit suspect and, and go for it, but definitely those big ones.